Welcome back. Colorado Senators Cory Gardner and Michael Bennett received a combined $78,000 from big pharma lobbyists last year. And at the same time, our local lawmakers are working on a way for Coloradans to get the medicine they need at a fraction of the cost. Now, one idea working its way through the Colorado Capitol right now is to allow the import of medications from Canada. Denver 71360 on Senate Bill 5 a few days ago, and patients say they are paying hundreds of dollars for medications they could get for a fraction of the price in another country. The bill's co-sponsors say they'll find a workaround if the pharmaceutical industry won't regulate itself. Well, critics of the bill say this is a dangerous idea since it would be hard to guarantee the health and safety of patients with medications that are not strictly monitored by the FDA. Now, all of them do agree on one thing. The cost of prescription drugs are too high. We need to all work together to figure out a way to lower prescription drug costs for patients at the pharmacy counter, period. Senate Bill 5 has already passed in one Senate committee and is headed for another. So drug costs, health care costs, all important things to Colorado's new Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera. Even before Governor Jared Polis elected her to head the state's new Office of Saving People Money on Health Care, Primavera was passionate about the issue, and I recently had the chance to sit down with the Lieutenant Governor and asked her about health care and how she sees her new role. Well, I think my role now, I'm playing a big role in health care. Uh, Jared Polis created the Office of Saving People Money on Health Care. And as we traveled across the state during our campaign, we heard over and over again that people, um, that the cost was just unaffordable for many people. So we wanted to create this office and not give it a fancy name because it's, we want people to understand that that's really what we're focused yeah, on. It's pretty clear cut. Money. Yes. So for those people who are not familiar with you, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you are a cancer survivor, so health care is an important topic to you personally. Well, I've seen the healthcare care system through, you know, lots of lenses. You know, if you did ask me 30 years ago if I ever thought I'd be the lieutenant governor, I would have told you that that was really a cruel <laughs> thing to ask because I was really fighting for my life at that point mm. in time. I'd been diagnosed with breast cancer and told I wouldn't live five years. And so <clears throat> in the first year of my treatment, I lost my job. I lost my health insurance. I was left with two little girls uh, to raise by myself that were three and five at the time. Mm. And uh, I also had to deal with the fact that they thought their mother was dying. So all I ever really wanted was to raise my daughters. And once I did and they were off to college, then I uh, made a run for office and I've served in the legislature for eight years and I was known as a champion for patients and I just want to make sure that people who have faced the same fate that I once did would have a good outcome as well. So so you have this new position, you're heading up this, this new department, so what are, you, what are you looking at as possible remedies for what we're dealing with in Colorado right now? Are you looking at Canada? Are you looking at Germany? What, what are you looking at as a model? Well, you know, there's lots of bills going through the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, there's one on reinsurance, which is uh, it's basically insurance for insurance. It helps uh, the insurance industry and, and people pay for those that have the highest ailments, whether it's a sickness or whether it's a geographic area. And this particular type of reinsurance program has lowered health care premiums by double digits in other states. So that's one model that we're looking at. We are looking at a bill to import drugs from Canada and save people money. You know, there has to be several um, safeguards in place. You know, they have to meet FDA standards and they have to be sure that they actually lower the out-of-pocket costs for patients. So those are some of the things we're looking at. Yeah. And, uh, and transparency as well. To try what and do you mean? kind of op pull the curtain back and see where the real health drivers in or cost drivers in health care. Uh, because I, I did get some questions from some viewers, and, and so for Melissa, she said many times when you go to the hospital, not all doctors are in your network, even if the hospital is in network and then it affects your bill. You get a big fat bill that surprises people. How is that being addressed? That is being addressed, and we call that surprise billing because mm -hmm. people do their due diligence. They go to the hospital that they know is in their network, but yet they get the surprise right. that there are providers in that hospital that aren't in the network. So there is a bill going through the legislature right now to address that. Uh, I think another question that uh, somebody asked was why can hospitals charge privately insured patients more to compensate for underpayments from Medicaid and Medicare? Well, I think it's to balance out um, the fact that they don't get as much money from, you know, other, other types of payers. So. Is there a way to simplify the system? Because most people can't even navigate the system, and, and you probably know this from your own personal experience. There is a way, and we've got, uh, we're going to 
take a look at every cabinet member and, and what department they run and whether or not they have a, a pl an active part in healthcare in, in the state. So there's lots of ways that we can simplify it. And some of the ways we've talked about right now are ways that we can with transparency, with hospital costs, with the importation of drugs from Canada, with reinsurance programs. And if we can just tackle those things this first year, I think we'll make a, a big step. And are you looking at something that's that will cover the entire state? Because I think one thing that we hear a lot about is that certain counties have no choices. People in certain counties don't have choice at all. Yes, we are. And we're trying to address those counties that have the highest premiums. There are counties in the mountains that have some of the highest costs in the state probably some of the highest costs in the country. And we're trying to make sure that we lower those health insurance premiums so that more people can have coverage up there. I know it sounds like a, a dumb question, but why is it so expensive? Why why does it vary so much? Well, that's what we're trying to get a handle on. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things we're trying to figure out. And we figured that there are solutions to that. And I think the reinsurance program is one of those things that um, can address that. Uh, um, let me think. So what, then what is your timetable for this office and, and trying to come up with some sort of a remedy? Because you know people want this now. They want some answers now. Right. Well, the bills that are going through right now will make a big step towards that. Um, we're convening all the cabinet members to make sure that we address it from every department. Jared and I have four years to do it. Uh, this didn't happen overnight that we got into this mess. and. Unfortunately, we won't be able to solve it overnight either, but it's it's one of the major focuses with this administration. Do you think this is a make or break for the uh, Polis administration? If this you know, doesn't it, come through? I think it's a make or break for people in general. You know, I think uh, people just can't afford their health care. And Jared has several priorities, you know, full day kindergarten is one, and health care, lowering the cost of health care is another, uh, moving us more towards a cleaner, renewable energy um, sources is another, and then lowering people's income tax is another. So he's really established four priorities, and health care being one, because that's what we heard over and over and over again. So, And do you see any states that are doing anything innovative that, that we might learn from or might glean information from? Yes, there are, like I said, other states that have done the reinsurance mm -hmm. program and lowered the premiums by double digits. So I think if we can just do that, that'll be a huge step. So your crystal ball, then when do you think this will happen? We're hoping by 2020 to make some big strides. Diane Primavera, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you.